Hello everybody, this is Tolkien for another League of Legends data video. Today we're going to be talking items and why you should be buying certain items and not others and you know what are the, the factors that come into it. I really want to take a look at the underlying logic rather than the results and uh, this video is here for that. You know, I want this to be the, the base the level uh, explanation of why you should buy some items and not others. So what you have to understand in League of Legends is that you buy items with gold and what matters is how much better your character gets uh, compared to the gold you spend. This means if you want to increase DPS, uh, the item that gives you the most damage per gold spent is going to be the best one. If you want to be uh, more harder to kill, then the items that make you harder to kill for its gold cost uh, and that is the cheapest compared to what it gives you is going to be the best one. So it all comes down to gold efficiency. If an item that costs 100 gold gave a thousand AD, every single champion would buy it because it would just be too efficient to pass. That's uh, the logic behind it. And what is gold efficiency? So gold efficiency is a concept because it doesn't really exist. Uh, when you buy some basic items, they have a specific cost and from them you can derive how much uh, the stat costs. So it's very easy to do for HP, armor, AD, AP and all those basic stats. Uh, but then uh, you have to take into account that for transformed items, so legendary and mythic items, usually the cost efficiency has to be higher because they take uh, less slots than many basic items, so they are more slot efficient and they are also uh, more cost efficient. That's just how the game is designed. So what matters is to compare the gold efficiency of the finished items between each other, the different options between each other, knowing that an item is 130% efficient doesn't really mean much if the other are 140% uh, efficient. And also, uh, there are derived um, gold efficiencies that you need to compute. And this is where, you know, uh, you have to introduce your own bias to how you compute that. For example, for Ability Haste, I went into it assuming that Kindle Game, Fendish Codex, Caulfield Warhammers, and uh, Aegis of the Legion were gold efficient. Let me just uh, put that in full screen. And wait, can I not do that here? Yes, I went into it assuming those four items were gold efficient because they give you pretty basic stats and uh, are roughly in the same price range. So as components for legendary items, which are from uh, 800 to 1k for gold, I assume they are all gold efficient. And on average, then, Ability Haze could cost about 24 gold per point. For Lifesteal, I just went for the normal one. For Lethality, for example, I introduced a lot of bias. So Serrated Dirk is a component in higher tier uh, items, but it gives a lot of AD compared to its cost. Uh, it's not here, but it gives 35 AD for its cost. Uh, that's almost the, the full <laughs> gold cost of the item. You, you get the lethality almost, uh, no, just 3080 actually. 3080, my bad. Um, so that's 1050 gold worth of 80 pretty much. So you get le the lethality for free. But then you have to compare uh, Serrated Dirk to other items in the same tier. That would be Zeal, that would be Noon Quiver, which are also components for higher tier items with an intrinsically very high gold efficiency because that's how Riot wants to make the items spike. And then sometimes you have items that have passives uh, that you need to be able to put a number on because you cannot just say, oh, all passives are too hard to compute, so I'm not going to include them in goal efficiency calculations because then uh, your theory becomes kind of pointless. You have to see how much uh, the passives actually give you gold. And that's why you also have to make another set of assumptions. And for me, uh, the set of assumptions is very clear. It's you're looking at the game state between 15 and 25 minutes, uh, champions being on one or two items, because that's where uh, the item builds actually matter. In the very early game, what you build uh, doesn't really have a big impact because all components have roughly the same gold efficiency, and uh, it's not really a huge uh, factor in uh, the, the result uh, of a fight, for example. Like, if you're ahead on items, you're gonna win. It's not really about having the better build early. And once uh, you get later to three and four items, it's really, really rare actually that games go to that kind of game state uh, on an even footing. And so as long as you're not completely squandering your gold, you should be okay. Like 
<laughs> of course, gold efficiency still matters on three and four items, but that's not where it will have the most impact. The most important part of the game is how to choose your first or second item and how to choose the build path to get there with your tier two boots as well, because that's where the game is going to be decided. It's going to be decided on the third and the fourth Drake fight almost every single time. And so I take this assumption and this then means you can create, you know, standard uh, champions. When you have a percent HP damage, you can assume that you will be hitting a target with, let's say, roughly 2000 HP. Uh, because most frontliners at this stage of the game have roughly 2000 HP coming from, you know, their black cleavers and other, you know, divine thunderers items. If you're hitting, you know, if you have an item that's meant to kill tanks, you can assume that in this part of the game, there will be around 120 uh, resistances and so on and so forth. You can make a lot of assumptions from, you know, uh, what will the game state look like from 20, 15 to 25 minutes. You can also assume, you know, what is the standard mage? Uh, what is the usual AP ratio on a full mage combo in a fight? And my conclusion was that it's roughly uh, 4 AP, 5 AP. You, you can go to 5 AP on a long fight. Uh, and that would be, you know, the, the total of all the AP ratios a mage will decide during a fight. And this means for magic damage, you can create an AP equivalent uh, to, to what was dealt. So by creating all of those assumptions and trying to think about how the game will be played and how the item will be used, you can then assume, uh, you can then assign gold efficiencies to even higher tier items. The only thing that you cannot really uh, assign a goal efficiency to are going to be very unique passives like movement passives, Gale Force, uh, Proto Belt, um, Stasis passives like Zonia, Revive, like uh, Guardian Angel. Those ones are very hard to quantify because they don't give you gold. They, are very, they have very, very specific use cases. There are situations where they're going to give you thousands of gold of values and lots of situations where they literally don't do anything until you, know, you activate them. Uh, but having the threat of it is also um, a very big part of those items. Anyways, that's uh, the underlying logic to the next videos that I will do. And so I will do one video per champion class. I will do a video, you know, on marksman item, another on fighter's item, another on assassin's item, mage's item, support items, to give you uh, the right tools to choose your uh, items during a game. That's it for this one. Don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments. I'll also link, of course, uh, this spreadsheet, the Python code I made to uh, create it mostly automatically. Have a nice day and uh, see you very soon.